So remember, we've got our chart, right? So if I'm looking for the sum of the interior angles of a 25 agon, I'm going to use that n minus 2 times 180. The n is the 25. Okay? So 25 minus 2 times 180. Make sense? Okay. For number two, I'm still going to use that. All of these angles are interior, right? And in order to find x, I need to find the sum of them. So it's the same process, sum of the interior angles, n minus 2 times 180. Now I have a picture, though, instead of a number. So what is my n? How many sides does this figure have? Five. So we do 5 minus 2 times 180. And I think we get 540. All pentagons have 540 degrees in them. Okay, you can remember it or you can calculate it. It doesn't matter. Then you just subtract out everything you know. So you add up 87, 105, 135, and 92. Whatever that is, you subtract it from 540 and your answer is what's left. Does that make sense? So you find the total and you subtract out what you know and what's left is that missing angle. Yes, no, maybe so. Give me some feedback guys. Yeah, we're good with that? Okay. Question number three, do we need to talk about that one or are we good on that one? Yeah, absolutely. So the word problems are kind of a struggle sometimes. Jake leans a 12-foot ladder against the house. The ladder is 12 feet. The angle formed by the ladder and the ground, so where does the ladder and the ground come together? That's this angle right here. That's 68 degrees. How far from the base of the house is the ladder? How far from the base of the house did he place the ladder? So the base of the house is down here. I'm looking for this distance. Okay, know that on the actual SOL, I expect all of your pictures to be labeled. You won't have to do the labeling. It should already be done for you. Okay, so now this is our reference angle, the 68, because hopefully our house is built at a right angle, unlike mine, because it's like 50 years old. If 68 is my angle, then the house is the O, the 12 is the hypotenuse, and the X is the adjacent. So I know I'm using SOHCAHTOA. What can I throw out? Because I don't have an O. I don't have any information there. Going to throw out the sine. Going to throw out the tangent. So what do I have to use? Cosine. Cosine of what? What goes next to the cosine? 68. Equals what over what? Absolutely. X over 12. Make that into a proportion and then see if you can cross multiply. Okay. All we're doing is cross multiplying. So cosine 68 times 12, put that in your calculator. Make sure it is in degree mode. Okay. In the real world, you'll have to put it in degree mode. On the SOL, as I understand it, they've changed it and it should default to degree mode, but double check. And then what do you get when you do that? 4.5, do we agree with that? Okay. So now we're looking at this 16 agon, right? This shape has 16 sides. If I extend these sides, right? And I'm not gonna do all of them, I'm just gonna do a few of them. If I extend those sides, then all of these blue angles inside are outside are exterior angles, right? And all of these red angles inside are interior angles. If I make a close-up of this, I've got an interior angle here and an exterior angle here. Okay, all I did was zoom in on one of those corners and blow it up over here. What do I know about the exterior angles of a shape? They always equal what? 360. If the exterior angles always equal 360 and exterior is always where I start, okay, it's so much easier than anything else. 
if I know it's 16 and 360 has been shared 16 times, how big are each of these blue angles? What's 16 or 360 divided by 16? What is it? Well, let's grab a calculator. 360 divided by 16. It's a decimal. 22.5. So if my exterior angles are all 22.5, how can I find my interior angles? These guys right here. What's the relationship between the interior and the exterior? They're supplementary. They add up to 180 degrees. So if my exterior angle is 22.5, can I do 180 minus 22.5 to give me my interior angle? 180 minus 22.5 is going to give me 157.5. So your interior angle is 157.5 and your exterior angle is 22.5. Okay. Interior and exterior equal 180. Exterior is always 360 as your total. So if you know there's 16 pieces that total 360, 360 divided by 16. Okay, it's a lot to remember. Go back to that chart and use the chart. We're going to work on it today. Hopefully it makes more sense. If an exterior angle, I love exterior angles, automatically you're thinking to yourself 360 degrees. One exterior angle is 30 degrees. How many sides does it have? Well, if we know that all of the angles have to total 360, what math can we do with the 360 and the 30? Absolutely. So what is 360 divided by 30? Easy peasy. If this, this one's tough, okay? This one's some algebra. If the sum of the measures of the interior angles, so interior, I'm thinking N minus two times 180. Okay, that should just like a Pavlov response. Interior angles, N minus two times 180 is 1980. So we're just gonna translate that just like you did in algebra and in middle school. Is means equals. So now I have an equation. How many sides does the polygon have? So I'm looking for the number of sides. So now I have to solve this equation. If I have n minus 2 times 180 equals 1980, what's the first step in solving that equation? I want to... Can I get rid of this 180? What do the parentheses mean? What math operation? Multiplication. So can I just divide by 180 and get rid of that? Is that allowed? Yeah. A lot of algebra teachers will have you distribute first. That's a whole lot of extra work. If you just have this number out here, just divide it away. And then n equals or n minus 2 equals 11. And then I've got to add 2 to both sides. And n equals 13. Okay, so this just becomes an algebra equation. You got to translate it first. You got to know that interior means n minus 2 times 180, and then you got to be able to solve it correctly. It's a big problem. Okay, this is exactly like the challenge problem on your test or one of the challenge problems on your test. So I want you to think of this 12-13 triangle first all by itself. This corner right here is a hinge. Okay, if I close the 13 and the 12, what's the difference between those two numbers? So I'm saying 12 and 13 is a hinge. If I close them, what's the difference between them? 13 minus 12 is one. What if I open the hinge as big as it can go and I've got 12 going in one direction and 13 going in the other direction? How big does that open? 25. Okay, so the range of the three side, the third side for that blue triangle is 1 to 25. Anything in the middle is going to make a triangle. So what if I make this other corner a hinge? How small will this close? If the 5 comes down here, what's the difference between 5 and 18? 13. And if I open it all the way up, the 5 goes the other way, how big will it open? 23. The problem is... They're connected right here, right? 
So this 12 would close all the way to 20, all the way to one, but it gets stuck at 13. And this one would open all the way to 25, but it gets stuck at 23. So if you find your difference in your sum for both triangles and you put those numbers in order, the answer is going to be your two middle numbers every time. And we want everything in the middle of that, right? So it can't actually be 13. That's going to make a flat triangle. It can't actually be 23. That's going to make a flat triangle. I want all the numbers in the middle in here in the number line. So what number falls between 13 and 23? 15. This is a huge conceptual problem. Okay. Definitely a hard level problem. But then we've got number eight. Number eight is pretty straightforward. How do we do this one? Proportion. So if I start my small triangle, because I always start my tri my small triangle, 20 over 24. What's my other fraction? 36 over 42 or 42 over 36? Why 36 over 42? So I've got small over large, so I've got to do small over large. When you cross multiply, does this work? Do you get the same number? Then it is not similar. The only thing this could be is side, angle, side. You've got these vertical angles. So all it could be is side, angle, side. The proportion doesn't work, so it doesn't work. I don't have any more angles, and I don't have a third side. Okay. Number nine was pretty good. Do we need to talk about that one, or are we good on it? Yeah. Shape is a rectangle. That's P. Shape is a rhombus. That's Q. This is Q. This is P. So we've got two things that are valid. If I end P... Q, that's valid. If I end not Q, not P, that's valid. And then invalid are my converse and my inverse. So converse, I change order, Q to P, and inverse is not P to not Q. Okay, so these two patterns work. These two patterns do not. This is Q, P. So is that valid or invalid? Invalid. Here I've got a shape as a parallelogram, that's P, then it's a quadrilateral, that's Q. The shape is a parallelogram, the shape is a quadrilateral. So now I've got P to Q. Is that valid or invalid? That's valid. I'm starting to get tired of looking at red. So quadrilateral, if it's a quadrilateral, that's P, then it is not a rectangle or rhombus. I have to circle those because frequently I forget to read them. The shape is not a quadrilateral, so now I've got a knot, so that's negate P. Then the shape is a rectangle. I got rid of the knot, so this is not Q. This is the inverse pattern. Is that valid or not valid? Is inverse valid or not valid? Not valid. And then I can come down here. It's a quadrilateral. That's P. Then it's a parallelogram. That's Q. It is not a parallelogram. That's not Q, and it is not a quadrilateral. That is not P. What pattern is that? That is valid. That is contrapositive, okay? I don't even really read the words. I will be completely honest with you. All I do is figure out what the P and Q are, and then I look for the patterns. I could care less if it's widgets or whatchamacallits or parallelograms. I do not read the words. I look for the patterns. That's the only way to consistently get these questions right. Okay. Same thing here. What's the contrapositive? So contrapositive, we're going to change order and negate. So I look at my hypothesis. I know this has to be negated and it has to go to the end. So all I'm going to do is check the ends for which one says the lines are not skew. Which one has the not P at the end? That's all I do, guys. Establish what the pattern is and predict it. It's not this one, not this one, and not this one. Okay. I don't know that we need to do 11, but let's definitely do 12. 
if a parallelogram or if a quadrilateral is a rhombus, that's P, this one is a little more difficult, then it is a parallelogram, okay? Then a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Because these start the same, we can just kind of ignore those words. The P is, is a rhombus. And the Q is, is a parallelogram. So this is Q again. So I can get rid of the parallelograms. Then it's opposite angles are congruent, R. So I need something that says rhombus and something that says opposite angles are congruent. Opposite angles of a rhombus are congruent. This one's a little tougher just because English language is not always as predictable as math people would like it to be. Okay. Questions on any of that? I know it's fast. We okay? Yeah. What do you think about 11? If an equation is in the form y equals mx plus b, then a graph is a line. The graph is not a line. What is that? Not Q. Therefore, it has three E's, so it has three dots. One, two, three. The equation is not in the form y equals mx plus b. We inserted that not into the P, so that's not P. So which one does it match? Think so? 